human beings and their closest biological relative, chimpanzees, are innately afraid of and attracted to reptiles. They automatically trigger off responses in a part of the brain called the amygdala that's associated with anxiety. And I think the evolutionary reason for this is that mammals and reptiles have been at war, in a sense, over ecological turf for something between 60 million and 200 million years. This isn't some zombie reptile. Unlike mammals, reptile reflexes remain deadly after death. In fact, they can still bite and deliver a killing dose of venom up to an hour after being decapitated. The bottom line? Leave snake handling to the experts. If I could rate my happiness right now on a scale from 1 to 10, it would be 11 because I found a treasure. I found a treasure from the vault of Peterson. Dude, I found uh, Bearded Peterson. And uh, I have to ask you, man, I never asked you this before. Who did you want to be when you grew up? Did you want to be like a Ninja Turtle or maybe like a racist cop or something? Uh, what about a pirate? Let's um, whip out that scented candle and put it on your table, man. We're going to go on a treasure hunt for Peterson wisdom, all right? We're going to be pirates, man, all right? So let's close our eyes and imagine that we're pirates, okay? So you're a young, budding pirate, man. You're like 25 years old, but with pirate life expectancy, that's not as much as it seems, but nonetheless, you have your vitality, you have charisma, and you have um, really kind of an alpha presence to you. And so you have, man, as a pirate, you have all your limbs, man. All your limbs are present. No hook, none of that. You, no wooden leg, nothing, man. You're completely healthy in that regard. But bro, I gotta, I gotta break it to you. You do have uh, pirate herpes. Yeah, you do have uh, pirate herpes. And so you're, we're gonna make this as uh, historically accurate as we can. And so you're traveling on a ship and there's an island in Argentina and um, you board, you know, you're about to rob some people on this island. And on this island, there are like a bunch of like Romanian gypsies. And you're like, I don't trust your tricks, gypsies. And you know a lot of car tricks and shit. And you steal stuff. Uh, and they're like, no, that's a ethnic stereotype. And you're like, shut up, motherfuckers. Shut up or, I, or I, I'll kill all of you. And um, the gypsies are like, hey, man, uh, for one thing, we're called Roma people now. But we got a treasure of wisdom. And you're like, a treasure of wisdom now, your parrot, trusty parrot, perks up and says, some parrot shit I can't imitate. Now your parrot is complicated because on a one-dimensional level of analysis, uh, the parrot is just a bird. But a th on a three-dimensional uh, level of examination, it's actually, it's an archetype, man. You have an archetype of, on your shoulder, and that archetype is actually baby Jesus. But it looks like a parrot, and, it's, uh, and it squawks. It really didn't, it doesn't give like the sermon on the shoulder, nothing like that. It, it, it's the whole thing with the parrot is complicated, right? Man, fuck it, fuck the parrot, let's not talk about it. We're not there yet, all right? But uh, the parrot indicates one way or another uh, that uh, this uh, treasure is worth having. Now let's open our eyes. It really is kind of getting gay. So these gypsies, dude, they lead you to their treasure chest. And they're, they're saying there's this Canadian academic and every spittle from him is a wisdom spittle. And you said, I know Peterson, gypsies. You don't need to tell me nothing about Peterson, man. And um, and they're like, don't call us gypsies, we're, we're the Roma people. And you're like, no, I don't recognize these gender pronouns. So that shuts them up. But they're kind of smiling and they have a wily look to them. Uh, you know, they're really operating on, under the illusion that uh, you're gonna uh, let them live. But that's not how uh, it works with the pirate archetype. So you open the treasure chest, my man, 
and it already has that funk, the funk of wisdom and that. But the first thing you see is something you haven't seen before, and it's a beard. It's Peterson's beard, and it's talking, man. We've never seen anything like that. Now, the easy way to look at this, at this whole situation, is as a, whole, as a huge waste of time. This whole scenario, this whole pointless introduction, but it turns out that the Peterson will explain to us that um, matter isn't real, and that everything is a wave of energy. And this wave of energy just fucking stuff it down your throat, all right, man? I have to open this shit somehow. It seems very simple from here. The red pills from Peterson, the red pills from uh, bearded Peterson. Let's get, get, get on to them. Let's get our fix. Like, my dude, no. You fucking, you didn't understand the Jesus spirit, motherfucker. You didn't have a clue that it was an archetype of baby Jesus. He just thought it was a fucking bird. Well, now, motherfucker, we're gonna analyze the fucking beard. What is the beard, dude? What's the beard, man? It is, it is the essence. It is the foundation of civilization. And you know why? It keeps things divided. No matter how hard a woman works, no matter you know how many degrees she gets or how fancy she thinks her math skills are you know the Google memo is you know she's gonna throw it in the garbage that nerd shit isn't gonna deter her you know what's gonna deter her you know what she's never gonna achieve a sweet pube garden on her face It'll never happen, my man. Some ladies can pull off a little thin mustache, uh, but uh, man, I've seen this shit. I deliver auto parts and at one of the stores, this older lady has a mustache and it's kind of odd that she has it. I don't give a shit at this point, but it's nothing like the sweet fucking archetypal beard, my dude. Think, think, think how much the beard knows, man. There's a lot going on in this beard and these hipsters are hijacking it. They're cucking the beard you know, by being total hipster cucks, we're gonna take the beard back. And Peterson took the beard back. Or did it, man? Did he take the beard back? Not making any sense yet? I came up with this shit when I was driving today, so I'll just, I'll just persevere with this. You see, the, the central question is, can Peterson grow facial hair? It depends on what kind of a truth you're looking at. Now, Jordan Peterson, as far as we know, is a post-pubescent man. He has passed puberty, and many men can grow facial hair of one sort or another and why not Peterson that's the scientific truth but the higher moral truth is we don't know what's going on man we don't know we have to analyze the beard as to whether or not it's gonna add benefit to society in the long term we can't just assume that the beard exists has Jordan Peterson's facial hair contributed anything to this to our humanity to the worth of humanity to the benefit of all living beings does God who may or may not exist favor Peterson's beard huh. a lot of questions to be answered before we're gonna trust this bearded Peterson you modify your face a little bit we don't know who you are listen up man this is gonna sound wild and crazy but it's 100 percent true there are certain lobsters in the ocean who get high on serotonin. They have mastered the hierarchy, but in an evil scheming way, my dude. They didn't uh, arrive there fairly. It was like an affirmative action type shit. And now these lobsters, they gather together. They gather together and these fucking lobsters misuse the Kabbalah. They use the Kabbalah in sinister ways. It's those crustaceans fucking playing God again, man. These crustaceans playing God again. And so what they do is they lurk, they go into your unconscious and they summon your, your uh, shadow self. They summon your shadow, dude. They summon your dark self. And this dark self is always given away by the beard, motherfucker. You can tell by the beard that it's not the real person, dude. Because a lot of people don't grow beards all of a sudden. And neither would P Peterson, maybe. You see, it's like a lot of my videos here are not recorded by me. They're recorded by the beard self, my archetypal dark self beard dude the beard uh, somehow you know got access to this account and it's recording shit all the time long fucking tedious videos nobody wants to watch motherfucker it's not what this channel is about like these rambling long introductions pointless introductions that's not what this channel is about dude it's the beard who's doing it you see how this video is different from the rest sometimes look at this look at this i don't even know what's going on here <laughs> PewDiePie! 
You, you saw that? I don't know what the beard is doing, man. I don't know what the beard is doing. One thing to do, one thing to do with this gypsy treasure, with this alleged uh, wisdom of Peterson, which could just be a bearded fraud created by Kabbalah, Kabbalah lobsters. One thing to do, we have to take one gem, we have to take one Peterson red pill and pop it into our mouth and do a little, you know, do a little test, dude. We have to test the shit out. Is this the beard? Are we going to taste the beard talking? Or is it Peterson behind the beard? Who's the man behind the beard? Again, nobody's sure that Peterson can grow facial hair. Whatever anybody says, <laughs> let's not fuck around, man. We know who did 9-11. We'll never forget Armenians for that shit. Okay, so we're going to do a little taste test. We're going to take a bit of Peterson uh, this alleged Peterson wisdom and we're gonna t test it if it leaves the same kind of profound aftertaste like his advice to clean your room you know have a good posture like you'll never hear anything any anything like that from anybody else and when we pop that like clean your room buckle wisdom we <laughs> can't mistake it with anybody else dude so let's see let's see if this is Peterson wisdom and uh, then we'll make our final judgment so god comes up and he's looking for adam because he's used to wandering around with him and adam's hiding behind a bush which says something about adam's level of intelligence first because you know god can see through bushes adam hiding behind the bushes god looking for adam in the bushes The first man was hermaphroditic and male and female together. <laughs> yep, man. Same old Peterson bullshit. Hey, let's watch these videos from the gypsy chest and offer our constructive criticism. This is what you came here for. Let's go. I'm not an atheist anymore because I don't look at the world that way anymore. I'm not a materialist anymore. I don't think the world's made out of matter. What, 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 what? I think it's made out of what matters. It's made out of meaning. Look at it from, a, from the perspective of modern brain science. Not made out of matter. It's made out of what matters. What, what the fuck are you, man? Are you Dr. Phil or some shit? Like, who says some shit like that? And let's talk about neuroscience. Hate my dudes. What about that schizophrenia? Well, what about it? You know, actually it eats away at the brain and all of the reactions that people have is just a symptom of their brain literally shrinking. Their frontal part of their brain gets destroyed, eaten away by the illness. So if we're not made of, out of matter, why would it matter? Oh my god, did I just say it? I'll be too lazy to reshoot this shit, but I'm sorry. I didn't know, really no pun intended. I'm not Peterson who likes to dwell in this world of banality. What about uh, football players, you know, whose head gets banged about and suddenly they develop suicidal thoughts and symptoms that they never had before and actually often commit suicide and sometimes become aggressive toward their families. How could this possibly happen? How could this possibly happen if matter doesn't, uh, is not important? I almost said matter doesn't matter the second time. And it's just like, it's just such a bullshit lie to say for a clinical psychologist. And you know what else? This is not personal information because Peterson talked about it openly. He used to have depression. And you know what helped him deal with his depression? It wasn't cleaning his rooms, my dude. It wasn't like improving his posture. It was fucking antidepressants. You know, he took antidepressants and he got better. But he'll never talk about it. I've never heard him once talk about it recently. I have to go back to beard, Bearded Peterson. Before on Canadian TV, Peterson would appear all the time and talk about his depression. And his solution at that point was to talk about medication. There's even like a show where he brings his daughter. And his daughter talks about her depression and how medications... Uh, helped her and it's like more power to them more power to them my dude i have to confess throughout periods of my life i uh took some uh psychoactive medications uh perhaps maybe right now 
Uh, but um, anyway, so yeah, I'm there in the same fucking boat with Peterson, but motherfucker, I don't tell people to like clean their room. I don't fucking tell them about the lobster posture, motherfucker. If somebody asks me about depression, I tell them, go to a good psychiatrist and get yourself some meds because it's a physical problem that goes on in your brain and everything you experience is just a symptom of that problem and if you have persistent depression over months and years chances are fucking cleaning your room and hanging out with good friends and going to the movies and whatever the fuck else going on a buddhist retreat isn't gonna solve that shit and uh, anyway dude it's all about the matter and the brain dude the old timers motherfucker why does all the perceptions or all the meanings you know uh, change when your you know memory begins to disintegrate in your brain why why would it happen if everything is fundamentally non-material fuck you peterson dude uh, cut the shit out man you know it's not fucking the world isn't made out of what matters what the fuck what we orient towards unconsciously which means what captures our attention is meaning and it captures our attention before we know what it is the brain acts as if the world's made out of information or made out of meaning liar liar canadian pants on fire no it doesn't that's not what the brain does you know what unifies a newborn baby and a 78 year old man who has laid stages of alzheimer's and dementia whatever you know what unifies them it's the ability to feel physical pain motherfucker the one unifying factor of what it means to be human is to feel f physical pain because that's what the brain registers you could be raised by these horrible alcoholic parents who keep you in the basement which happened to this girl in ukraine and she basically spent her time with dogs and uh, moved around on all fours and acted like a dog and barked like a dog it's actually a disturbing footage if you want to find it on youtube i'll be too lazy to pull it here too lazy to pull it here for six years, Oksana Malaya spent her life living in a kennel with dogs. Totally abandoned by her mother and father, she was discovered behaving more like an animal than a human child. For two centuries, wild children have been the objects of fascinating study. Raised without love or social interaction, wild or feral children pose the question, what is it that makes us human? Since but the point is, you know, she didn't know language, she didn't ho have any concepts of meaning, uh, like we do at least, But and yet she felt pain. And it goes for all of our ancestors, many of whom lived in like just survival mode all the time, most of the time, and had very short lives. And that's what the brain does first and foremost, is regulate your interactions with the physical world with the physical world like if you go to a forest and a bear lunges at your balls and rips one off the brain will communicate that pain and then you're not going to go to that fucking forest that's the primary thing that the brain does it's not to look for something meaning you know the shit with meaning dude look around you man look around you at the store look around like the hot girls uh, at the mall who gives a shit me about meaning fucking nobody it's when you're depressed or you're fucked in the head you start to look for meaning Nobody gives a shit about this meaning, dude. Everybody's just like downloading apps and shit. Who knows what the fuck they're doing? I know they're not reading fucking Heidegger and Nietzsche, motherfucker. Liar, Peterson, you lie. Heidegger, for example, German philosopher, was convinced that the world was made out of meaning, essentially, and that um, people's primary interaction with being was interaction with meaning. A lot of people in Europe in the 20th century, in Eastern Europe, they were made out of meaning, man. They were made out of meaning for a while. They had short and often miserable lives. And then they were turned into fucking ashes in Auschwitz during bombardment by the Germans the nazis etc they were turned into ashes my dude and just scattered around in the wind motherfucker thanks to heidegger because motherfucking heidegger found his meaning in the mustache in the mustache he found his meaning you know by uh, being a nazi and um, 
this should tell you something about this big idea of meaning. Very dangerous, my dude. Very dangerous. You know, if you want to go out into the mountains of Nepal and meditate there and you have a grandiose conception of uh, enlightenment or the potential of the human mind, go ahead and do it, dude. Big ideas, good ideas, or at least ideas that aren't uh, in any way harmful to the rest of us. Go ahead. Amazing things could happen when people meditate. You know, some people develop resistance to cold temperatures, etc. Motherfucker, cool. Good for you, motherfucker. You know what usually happens with big ideas? You know, it gets plugged into our tribal network and millions die. Well, millions now, but thousands die, motherfucking, with the cross, with the, with the other shit, whatever you want to go for, whatever symbol or meaning, the nation, religion, uh, communism, Nazism, race, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people died because of this grandiose meaning. Let's take this big meaning and talk it in the bathroom in the toilet motherfucker flush it down like a tampon and make sure it doesn't clog the drains problem with the standard view of matter is that it doesn't really deal with the fact that matter comes in arrays and in patterns and the patterns and the arrays which is sort of lost when you think about atoms that's where all the action is that's where the reality is wow, wow. quantum retard alert wow, wow. Quantum retard alert. Hey ladies, you know, we should get laid. You know why? Because our atoms are interconnected in the dark matter. I got some dark matter to put into you. Bang, bang, you know, very smooth, very good at foreplay. Oh, how gentle on those nipples I am because I know the quantum mechanics, motherfucker. Quantum mechanics, mother shit. You know, it just sounds so fancy and everybody can skim through the Wikipedia article. There's some fucking cat that vanishes and you know, if um, Jordan Peterson is so committed to quantum mechanics, or at least the bullshit interpretations, maybe sh he should collect the positive vibes, or maybe people can, you know, send him some dark matter or some shit instead of actual cash. You know, some somehow all, all these, you know, Deepak Chopra and other motherfuckers talking quantum mechanics, you know, when it comes time to get paid, they fucking take uh, greenbacks. They're not interested in, you know, in dark matter at that point you know it's fucking green matter that they go for <laughs> green matter how clever sweet bros homies and ninjas chances are you don't understand what's going on there with this whole quantum bullshit it's just it's very dude it's very abstract and people just you know pull it in different directions it's just like it, it has become like some spiritualist bullshit new age fucking putty for every asshole to shape into the size of their own archetype motherfucker no just dump it out of the whole population of humanity there's just a fraction of percent who actually understands this shit like a fucking fraction of percent and this fucking uh, gender pronoun warrior is not one of them god creates adam and eve explicitly in his own image there's a variety of interpretations about the first being that god created so there's a tradition in medieval christianity and, and judaism as well that the first man was hermaphroditic and male and female together and then separated into two separate entities which then were forever looking to be rejoined which gender pronoun would i have to use in conversation with this him off like you see the old bearded peterson didn't get the memo on on the gender pronouns because it doesn't sound very binary the primary hemophrodite that then split into two doesn't sound like he he was in possession of a of a binary pronoun you know what i'm saying and there's a very profound psychological idea there which is that the union of masculine and feminine produces a kind of perfect wholeness profound idea a very profound idea hey bro go to any folk festival and find the first broad with unshaved legs and she's gonna tell you the whole thing the masculine and the feminine combined into one to create perfect wholeness hey baby shave your legs first my dude a while back i was living in seattle years ago now and um i just you know was wandering around i had no social life and i was like hey let me go to this folk festival my dude my dude i saw i saw a lady there with unshaved legs it was like before the ISIS beheadings, this was the most traumatic thing I encountered. I mean, boy, was she furry. 
was she furry man she had more like she had nicer kind of hair like fucking strength there on her legs than i do and otherwise she was relatively attractive very traumatic very traumatic but if you talk to guys like this you know at burning man they'll tell you about this profound psychological idea that the union of male and female will create uh, wholeness but thanks peterson thanks for uh, you know drudging up those traumatic memories for me whatever consciousness is it comes in masculine and feminine embodiments the masculine and the feminine embodiment are equally representations of god which i think is quite remarkable because you know there's a whole line of feminist criticism of the western tradition that makes the presumption that the whole structure is patriarchal and i don't think that's true if it was patriarchal if it was purely patriarchal, how could these feminists ever explain the fact that 70% of popes were hermaphrodites? Sometimes a heterosexual cis male will find his way in there. Motherfucker, they all have two pairs! The feminine symbolic category is the, the genetrix of things, the matrix, because... No, silly rabbit, the genetrix is for kids. That's the matrix of being, and new biological forms come, come out of a feminine substrate, that's female creatures. And so the masculine aspect is more seminal. Dude, dude, have you been using the family computer, the family laptop, you know, when you and the girl do taxes and shit? <laughs> dude, time to clean that seminal aspect from it, dude. I know the, the screen on your phone is small and inadequate for your needs. Motherfucker, clean away that seminal aspect. That seminal aspect is not gonna merge with the feminine ever. There's not gonna be a hermaphrodite that will come out of it, dude. It's just a product of uh, uh, kind of desires, of forsaken desires, you know, of guilty, guilty and sad desires because you're not getting what you want from your lady friend. Motherfucker, wipe that shit. Take some industrial alcohol, you know, fucking wipe the keys. Just do the decent thing, dude. You're gonna feel better about yourself. In, in the symbolic sense of that, the seminal idea is the instigator, so to speak. And it's also, it also stands in mythology for a kind of logical clarity and cutting. Oh, okay. Whereas the feminine stands for more like something that's whole and undifferentiated. There's some suggestion in the story of Adam and Eve that the woman is the primary food sharer. And I think that's associated in some way with her ability to make Adam self-conscious. Okay which is exactly what she does. She offers him something that makes him self-conscious, and she becomes self-conscious as conscious also as a consequence. I mean, m women make men self-conscious. You, you can't think of a truth that's truer than that. Well, this is certainly true, but only if they're hot. Only if they're hot. So God comes up and he's looking for Adam because he's used to wandering around with him, and Adam's hiding behind a bush which says something about Adam's level of intelligence first, because, you know, God can see through bushes. Come out, come out, wherever you are, you little hermaphrodite. Don't forget, Adam, Hashem has made your dick, balls, and vagina. Get out there from that shrubbery, man. I know where you're at. But it also says something about his level of self-consciousness, because what it means is that when Adam becomes self-conscious, he no longer believes that the fact that he was made in the image of God is sufficient to give him stature. And so God says, well, who told you you were naked? And this is where, this is really Adam's fall, I think. He says it was the woman. He blames her, which is really pathological. The woman you gave me, it was her fault. Yeah, she made you self-conscious. Well, hooray, you know, you woke up. There's something to be said for that. Now, women torture men into being awake, and I don't suppose that's always received with gratitude. Honestly, Peterson, how much do you get laid? Do you get laid outside of marriage? Do you cheat on your wife? Because you're talking all this shit about men and women and women torturing men and all this drama. There's no drama between me and women unless I want to have sex with them. Unless there's just like all the emotions start flowing and 
I can't live without you and I start you know sending smiley faces and actually looking at emojis that I normally don't use in my day-to-day -day correspondence then it's like everything starts flowing and all the shit with the torturing and all the shit comes into play but you motherfucking Peterson you you know Peterson occupies the strange kind of place in celebrity and it's primarily centered in YouTube with the YouTube s superstars and celebrities is that they're relatively well known hundreds of thousands of people potentially millions know who they are but it's a huge fucking sausage fest you can like dive into the sea of so you know of dicks and just cruise on them like a rock star which is the worst type of uh, crowd surfing you can do when you're surfing on autistic dicks and this is what Peterson primarily is doing but with his scale and shit you know maybe he can catch some tail from some groupies who are um, you know quality quality ladies maybe he can and in this case you know but it makes sense to talk about the shit but if he doesn't get laid then this is like dude just let it go man it's even painful to go there into the sexy and exciting and painful drama all the time you're just like you're going back to wifey and what are you arguing about like long-term relationships people don't fucking argue about anything profound like the most profound if you like get divorced are kids which is banal and then uh, next to that it's like if somebody put it's like Boris why did you put the cat to sleep you know there was like some possibility for his kidney stones and you're like shut up shut up woman I don't. Uh, stuff like that that's as profound as it gets with arguing over toasters dirty toasters who's gonna take out the garbage you know who's gonna like go have oil change on your car there's no drama peterson and like why do you like invoke this drama from your past when things were spontaneous and interesting i guess it's just painful if you're deprived of it of it but if i don't know if you're getting laid and uh, if your body's surfing on all these autistic dicks and suddenly you fall into an actual you know hermaphrodite who turns into a woman who turns into an archetypal jesus and then suddenly you're getting a blowjob then that's fine but aside from this dude there's no drama with women unless you like unless you have an agenda no agenda no fucking drama john milton he wrote paradise lost for two reasons and one was to justify the ways of god to man here's a question he tried to answer which was well if god was uh, all-knowing why would he set Adam and Eve up to fall? Clearly God wanted the feminine archetype food sharer Eve to give an Arby sandwich to the weird hermaphrodite Adam so to cuck him basically and make him feel self-conscious and shit and uh, dude this is what we call gentrix. And Milton has a very sophisticated answer to that and it is that people truly have free will and even if God knew that they were going to fall um, there was nothing he could do to stop that except deny them free will. And free will is so valuable that that denial was not going to happen. Why can't I fly? Why can't I just take off and fly right now? Well, presumably it's because the big guy, he set the parameters of free will for me that didn't include flying. Flying is not on the agenda as far as uh, the big boss is concerned. And um, that's kind of goes for everything. You know what would be cool if within these parameters, kind of like I can't fly, right? And I can't really have a fetish, too much of a fetish for female wings because, you know, humans don't have wings. So, I mean, I guess I could go for the weird fury, fury shit, but there aren't too many of those. Wouldn't it be awesome if within these parameters of not being able to fly, God has also included things like not being able to fuck children, like have no attraction to children whatsoever, not being interested in torturing and raping women or whoever, not having these fetishes that are in some people so strong that they commit hideous crimes, not having psychopaths who actually derive pleasure from inflicting pain. You know, being in a world where Adolf Hitler uh, for example, would fantasize about the things that he did or a serial killer or, or whoever is your embodiment of evil, but would never be able to actually inflict pain on others. Because in the act of inflicting pain on others, you profoundly affect their free will. You know what I mean? If I would have a few ladies chained to, you know, to a radiator in my basement, I would think that their free will would be severely compromised. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Uh-huh. If I had two hamsters 
and um, I knew that they're territorial hamsters and that if I put them in a cage they're gonna fight and kill each other presumably I guess they could have free will I mean they could violate their insect instincts that I have also created if I were God but uh, where is where is the fucking free will in this shit where is the free will in this hamster cage especially especially when God you know creates a world so unequal that certain things like perhaps stealing food from a grocery store is nothing I had to ever confront as a moral choice because I was never in that position it's just goofy shit uh, it's like arguing against religion is just goofy and it's almost like too easy to do but fuck it Peterson I mean I guess you compel me into it you lobster you well, the snake in the Garden of Eden is a really interesting character human beings and their closest biological relative chimpanzees are innately afraid of and attracted to reptiles. They automatically trigger off responses in a part of the brain called the amygdala that's associated with anxiety. And I think the evolutionary reason for this is that mammals and reptiles have been at war in a sense over ecological turf for something between 60 million and 200 million years. The other day I ran into the salamander. Uh, dude, it was like a shitty one. It was using the N-word, just no regards for the history of this country. And I really wanted to fucking kick, kick its ass. There's a long war going on, motherfucking salamander. It was ripe for cucking. I mean, I have to confess, when I first saw it, I was really terrified. I was terrified of it, but then I overcame my fear like I always do, especially with animals that are uh, one hundredth of my size or, or less. And uh, in this case, I was about to fucking totally kind of, man, just punch it out, uppercut it out of existence, fucking Mortal Kombat style. But then I've realized that it's an amphibian. My beef is not with the amphibians, dude. My historical beef is with the fucking lizards and shit, and pterodactyls if they exist, and all these motherfucking reptiles. This salamander, you know, please go on to live another day. You're like, you're neutral. You're Switzerland in my long lasting war and fear of reptiles. Reptilian features, which are cold blooded. Uh, uh, piercing-eyed, toothed, lurking, nocturnal, out there, out in the unknown, out where chaos is. The snake in the Garden of Eden is representative of all those things that lurk when you think you know what you're doing. And when you think you know what you're doing, you've carved out this little Eden, this little paradise in which you're operating. But there's always something that's lurking, and that's all the things you're not paying attention to. Well, that's the snake. And when that snake pops up, people are, we're wired. If a little snake pops out, we might want to run away from it. But like, we're curious about that. We're going to go over there and investigate it right away. Man, oh man, that Peterson wisdom. You know, sometimes I create a little paradise for myself in my head as I'm cruising on Pornhub. And I'm just looking at different categories that appeal to me and looking at the videos. And then, motherfucker, the snake is there, dude. The snake appears. And it's just some suggested video by the Pornhub algorithm. And it's always some fucking gross shit, man. I'm, suddenly, I'm like, I'm looking at like Japanese videos, you know, like tickling videos or some shit and suddenly i see this huge fucking gaping asshole it's like it's the snake dude but unlike peterson i <laughs> i don't want to investigate that shit but seriously like it the porn has gotten really gross and like i've quit it entirely I'm, I'm just fucking done with it. It's so disgusting. You know, they like to do the scene that I never actually watch, but again, like, they like to suggest that shit to me. And it's when a woman is laying underneath the man with her legs spread, and then he's kind of like, um, that position. And they're just filming it from behind, and what you're looking at is the fucking dude's tainted ass. His tainted fucking ass take up half the fucking screen. Why would I ever want to see that shit? I can barely see the woman. And even then, like, I'm just looking at a fucking asshole, dude. Like, what the fuck are you... Like, who watches this shit? Like, this shit has become, like, an anatomical exam, man. T talk about the destruction of paradise. I want to go back to those days, you know, when it's like, ooh, Victoria's Secret catalog, you know? Like, I want to go back to the mystery of the female body. Ladies, I want that mystery mystery I want that mystery I don't I'm not into that fucking disgusting shit man well that the snake suggests you know amen Peterson good point good point now 
When chimps come across a python in the forest, they have a specific cry. It's called a snake ra. It's called a snake ra. And the chimps who don't like snakes, they don't run from it. They back off and then they watch the thing. They cannot tear their eyes away from it. And some of them will stand there and look at it for 10 minutes. Other individuals will stand there for hours watching the snake. Does anybody know one of those chimps that looks at a snake for hours? I really could use them on this channel. I mean, right now the average view duration is um, seven minutes, which isn't bad considering like a lot of random people going by, etc. But hey man, if I can make a fucking video of the snake for chimps to watch for hours, Peterson, like, I, like when I first, before I recorded this video, when I was like cutting this up, I actually laughed at this, like a chimp for hours watching the snake, but <laughs> I guess I'm laughing now, but it's just, I just can't like fully joyfully laugh at this. I mean, there's just too much. There's just an overload. The unknown is fascinating. We can't look away from it. We have to encounter it, even if it's terrifying. It's partly why, you know, teenagers like horror movies. They're driven to look at the snake. They're driven to interact with the snake. In Genesis, of course, interacting with the snake means the end of paradise, just like it does in life. Interacting with a snake means the end of paradise, just as it does in life. <laughs> Peterson, like, do you even like compute what you're talking about? <laughs> do, you, do you understand what you're talking about anymore? Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Interacting with a snake in life means the end of paradise. I mean, interacting with a snake in life means like 95% of the time the snake just fucking runs away from you, like sk skits away from you or whatever their mo motion is called. Fucking English is my second language, dude slides away i don't i don't know the, the 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 snake goes away from you dude like literally in the whole of united states population 300 million people like five or six people die because of snake bites in a year i mean basically next to no one you literally and this is not an exaggeration you have a greater statistical chance of being hit by lighting than being killed by a snake and i don't even know why I'm commenting on everything he says at this point, <laughs> but still, I mean, it's like, I guess, okay, well, Ivan, you're a retard, he was talking about the metaphor, well, what metaphor, if, if the snake, snake is the unknown, then interacting every time with the unknown doesn't mean the end of paradise, what am I saying? Much of what's unknown gives life savor, it, it, it provides the kind of excitement that justifies suffering. The injunction behind religious thought, fundamentally, is that you should live your life in such a way that the suffering it has to contain, because you're confined and vulnerable, is justified. Well, you see, that's actually a very good point. I'm not gonna, like, shit on everything Peterson says, and uh, this, is a, this is a really good point. I know you probably are tired of, like, Eastern Europe talk at this point, but I'll just make it quick. Like, if you look at the narratives that emerged from World War II in countries and people who were severely affected by it, like in Russia, you have this myth of um, a glorious victory. And even for myself, like, the you know, the victory parade has some meaning in Russia because a, a lot of my family died. And it's just like this heroic triumph, like an existential battle. And uh, there are elements of truth to it. And there is just the fact that millions of people, millions of people died for no reason. Like their life just was kind of flushed into nothingness and only our narratives uh posthumously like retrospectively create meaning uh to their lives and even that is primarily for our own lives to continue with some glorious um narrative in the back as opposed to just a horrible tragedy a horrible kind of confrontation caused by flaws in human nature and our predisposition toward tribalism and, um, you know, when you look at uh, Jewish people, you have the Holocaust, and there there's more of an acknowledgement of a meaningless, horrible kind of tragedy. But still, meaning is derived from the state of Israel, and again, this idea of triumph, again, kind of validating uh, people who lived after the tragedy, retrospectively validating the narrative 
Um, and the religion really kind of is that rug like in Big Lebowski that kind of ties the room together. It really does kind of justify and explain tragedy. It makes um, unpredictable world explainable. It actually, like religion unlike science, can predict nothing. In centuries of its existence, it predicted nothing. Christians have always predicted the end of the world in every century, but uh, so far, you know, so far no luck on that front. The coming of Jesus, whatever it is, no ability to predict anything, but to have this explanation and a narrative superimposed on a random, painful often, and um, uh, in many cases, broken lives, that is the big gift of religion, and Peterson nailed it. I would say human beings are built to take tragedy, but they're not built to take evil. The most unsettling thing isn't that a close relative dies of cancer, unsettling as that is. The most unsettling thing is to be treated casually in a brutal manner for no other reason than the brutality itself. That's what undermines your sense, your belief in human existence and in the value of human existence. That's what demoralizes and kills. Many social scientists in particular, I would say, um, feel that the idea of evil is an anachronistic. The reason that evil is obliterated out of consciousness is because we don't have a theory to account for it. You know, we don't have a framework within which it fits. Now, religious ideation certainly provides that kind of framework. What do you know? Another good point, uh, another good point by Peterson. Yeah, I mean, our foundations and our kind of mental stability, etc., is interconnected with our immediate tribe, our immediate social environment, the social animals, and some sort of a penetration of that tribe by antisocial behavior is profoundly destabilizing. Uh, on the one hand, there is a sense of agency uh, that somebody did it as opposed to just the indifference of nature or malfunctioning of the immune system or whatever brings about illness but um, when somebody does it there is a sense of agency but there's also like a sense of violation you hear it from rape victims you hear it from people who are molested from um, other victims of crime that perpetual insecurity uh, when um, aberrant behavior uh, pierces your life and makes you bleed or somebody you love bleed and that is hard to deal with and hard to process it also violates trust that uh, as you know obviously acts as a cohesive and uh, human relations and if you don't have trust you can't extend yourself to other people and uh, again you know like one of the thing Peterson again I don't think he ever talks about this but the one scientific study long-term Harvard study of their graduates about the happiness of people's lives is people who are more interconnected people who live more social life and have more friends etc they're the they're the happiest but you you'll hear about the fucking lobster and the fucking posture You'll never hear about Peterson's antidepressants, and you'll never ever hear about actual science that shows that um, social interconnection is uh, the best uh, way to have a happy life. I say this as a person who hardly interacts with anybody. All right, my dudes. Yeah, and religion also like works as uh, reinforcing the borders of the tribe by condemning something as evil. If you believe that somebody did this because of Satan or something, or because of some demonic aberration, or because of their violation of uh, the will of God, again, this doesn't predict anything, but it explains it, and in that way, kind of reinforces your own psychological health. And if a group of people believe the same as you do and expel the same people they consider evil uh, then uh, reinforces tribal cohesion reinforces social bonds in that way uh, just like totalitarian regimes need enemies to flourish and reinforce their power human tribes and uh, social groups uh, need need enemies as well as we see with football teams and uh, different uh, irrational groups of nerds, etc. Uh, my dudes, my dudes, my dudes, my dudes. What, what else is there to say? That's Peterson. He goes on to ramble about school shooters and how their philosophical nihilism led them to shooting. Complete and utter crap. Complete and utter crap. But um, I'm not going to go into it. I think bearded Peterson has said enough. And uh, so has beardless Ivan. And uh, you have now been uh, introduced to both. And uh, listen, let me give this uh, YouTube talk. 
dude subscribe all right let me know what you think in the comment section about adam hiding behind the shrub let me know i need to know it's not like i want you to comment so it uh, YouTube promotes my video more because there's more interaction. No, please tell me about the shrub, dude. <laughs> dude, I want to know, like, is he retarded or is he just confused by his genitalia? Uh, what's going on with that, with that hermaphrodite Adam? And uh, what else is there? Oh, yeah, share the video. You know, your mother wants to see this. Your mother needs to see this. Give this to your mother. Uh, and what else? Subscribe, share, comment. Fuck it, dude fuck it. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for watching.